Hello everyone, welcome to Botany of Shah channel for UPSC examination. In today's video, we are going to see the auxins, which are the plant growth hormones. These auxins are produced naturally in the plants and play a very important role in the life cycle of the plants. So we will see this topic in detail in this video lecture. All right. Before starting the video, I request you to join the Telegram channel of the same name that is Botany Optional for UPS examination on the Telegram platform. The link for this channel is given in the description box. So let us see about the auxins. Now, first of all, what are the auxins? Now, this word auxin means to grow. That is, these auxins are primarily responsible for growth of the plant. That is why such a type of name is given to this growth hormone. That is auxin, which literally means to grow. Now, these auxins are most naturally occurring plant growth hormones. That is, in a plants, these uh, auxins are of natural occurrence and they are found most abundantly in the plant kingdom. These auxins are chemically the weak organic acids which are capable of pr promoting cell elongation during the growth of stem and root. That is, the, the very function of the auxin is to elongate the cell and that is why they help in the long growth of roots as well as the stem that is the length of stem and length of the root is increased due to the auxins so these auxins are naturally occurring in plants chemically they are weak organic acid and they are helpful in elongation of the stem and root now where where is the site of synthesis of auxin in plants that is in a whole plant body, where are those parts where the auxin is synthesized? The typical part where the auxin is synthesized are the shoot tips, then root tips and the young leaf primordia. Now, after the synthesis of these auxin in this particular area, they migrate to the region of elongation. That is, whenever, wherever there is a process of elongation, all these auxin are translocated there that is in a stem and in a roots whenever there is requirement of elongation the auxin plays an important role and while they are synthesized in shoot tip root tip and young leaf primordia they translocated to that location where the re, where the elongation is needed all right now let us see about how the translocation of auxins takes place in plants that is we have seen that the auxins are synthesized in, at the shoot tip then the root tip and young leaf primordia now from this area they has to translocate to the different parts of the plant body in order to do the proper function now how they are translocated now the very mechanism of transport of auxin is an polar transport now polar transport means translocation of auxin from morphological apex to the downward direction so whenever the oxygen synthesized at the apex it moves downward like this in all parts of the plant body so that whenever there is a requirement of oxygen it will be provided everywhere in the plant now if you consider the shoot part it will move from tip to the bottom of the plant but if you consider the root it will translocate from the apex of the root to the base of the root right that is when we talk about the shoot transport of auxin the auxin is moving downward that is from morphological apex to the downward but when we talk about the roots the auxin synthesized at the root tip will move upward so root carry the auxins in upward direction while the shoot carries the auxins in the downward directions. This typical translocation is called polar transport. All right. So translocation of auxin in plants takes place in a polar manner. All right. Now there is a typical concept of apical dominance in plants and auxin is quite responsible for this apical dominance. As we have seen, the apex area or the tip areas are the prime sites for the production of 
oxygen. Now, this oxygen due to the polar transports move in a downward direction in the plants. Now, you may have know that apical dominance means when an apical bird is so dominating that it inhibits the lateral birds. That is why there is only only growth in a length of the plant and not the width of the plant. All right. That is whenever there is a presence of apical bird, it inhibits the lateral birds. And that is why a plant only grows in a height and not in the width. And this apical bird, which is present right here, is producing the oxygen in very large amount. Now, what makes lateral birds to get inhibited by the apical bird? Now, what happens at the apical bird, the oxygen production is at very high rate. And due to the high, high oxygen in this area, this high oxygen is quite responsible for inhibiting the lateral birds. And that is why you will never find the big branches at the tip of the plant. But as the oxygen moves downward, its quantity got less and less. And when it reaches to the bottom, like this area, concentration of oxygen is very less. And very less oxygen concentration make the apical bird active. And that is why lateral growth takes place. Now, in this particular picture, you can see at the bottom, you will find the large branches, while at the shoot, you will find very small branches, right? These are the small branches at the tip, but very large branches at the base. Now, what is the basic reason behind that is a apical dominance. Because at the shoot tip, very large quantity of oxygen is produced and the large quantity of oxygen inhibits the lateral birds. And due to the inhibition of lateral birds, you will not find any large growth at the apex of the plant. But when the, this large quantity of oxygen moves downward, when it reaches to the certain lower area of the plant, the concentration of oxygen will come to the very lesser amount. And that is why lateral birds activated here and the large trees branches are formed at the base of the tree. So in apical dominance, what happens? Generally, apical bird inhibit the lateral bird due to the large quantity of oxygen. And that is why we find the lower branches to be more tough and hard as compared to the upper branches. All right. There are not only the natural oxygens, but there are also the synthetic oxygens as well. Now, the natural oxygen is an indole 3 acetic acid, that is IAE. This IAE is naturally found in plants and is a natural oxygen. While the synthetic oxygens are naphthalene acetic acid, that is NAA, then 2,4-dichlorophenoxy acetic acid, that is the 2,4-D, and 24 5 trichlorophenoxy acetic acid that is 245T out of them the second one that is the 24D is largely used in the agricultural applications and that is why it is a quite famous one so the oxygens are not only the naturals but also we have their synthetic forms which are made in the laboratories natural form is an indole 3 acetic acid while the synthetic form are NaA 24D and 245 now, let us see the applications of the auxins. Now, first of all, auxins promote the cell division and cell elongation in the plants, which are which form the very important steps of the growth in plants, right? Now, the second application of the auxin is the root initiation in the vegetative reproduction. As you know, in a vegetative reproduction, the vegetative part of the plant body is planted to make it grow into the new plant. Say for a reason, we have taken the stem for the vegetative growth. Now, if you applied the oxygen to the cut part of the these stems, these stems will grow rapidly and forms roots. That is, the oxygen plays a very important role in the production of roots. Now, the third application of the oxygen is it prevents the abscission. As you know, abscission is the fall of leaves, flowers or say fruits from the plant. Now by inhibiting the hydrolytic enzymes in the abscission layer, oxygen prevents the abscission. Alright. 
the next application of the auxin is it is used to produce the seedless or parthenocarpic fruits that is the treatment of synthetic auxins given to these particular fruits which make them seedless and the parthenocarpic fruit the 24d as we have discussed earlier is used to eliminate the dicotyledon weeds from the monocot field as you know in the fields generally like wheat field we have all the monocot crops but there are certain weeds at the ground level and we want to eliminate that weeds only so 24d has a such a great application that it only kill the dicotyledonous weeds and not the monocot plants and that is why 24d is a very target specific due to the, this target specificity this 24d will only kill the dicotyledonous weeds and monocot field will remain untouched and that is why these auxins has great applications in agriculture as well all right so thank you very much for watching this video please like the video share this video with your friends who are studying the botany subject and please subscribe to the botany option channel for upsc examination again thank you very much for watching this video see you in the next one